It's been 35 years since aliens attacked and almost destroyed this planet in a fantastic war of the worlds. Had they not been susceptible to common Earth bacteria, their invasion would have succeeded. But when it failed and the threat had ended, the alien bodies were gathered up, sealed in drums, and forgotten. Until now. One of the most highly acclaimed science fiction stories of all time comes to television in a one-hour weekly series. War of the Worlds. What would you say if I told you that Earth was being invaded by aliens from another planet? The new Paramount series War of the Worlds turns H.G. Wells' classic thriller into a modern science fiction adventure. Few people are as excited about the series as Greg Strangis, the executive producer and creator. War of the Worlds, the series, uses as its launching point the George Powell 1953 movie, War of the Worlds. Our show uh, contradicts that premise just the tiniest bit. It seems that the aliens did not die from exposure to bacteria. In fact, they were uh, forced into an involuntary state of hibernation. We pick them up 35 years later, today, 1988, and discover that, uh, that they did not die. And uh, in fact, they're back and they're not very happy. A few other changes were necessary to bring War of the Worlds into the 1980s. When it came to modifying the aliens, Greg and his father Sam, who was also an executive producer on the series, had some rather interesting ideas. They have this terrible ability to possess living human bodies. Uh, when they leave the body, the body is worthless. You wouldn't want to be in it anymore. They're at your homes, they're at your television stations, they're on your radio stations, they're everywhere. The job of stopping the aliens before they regain their power is assigned to a team of highly trained specialists. Actor Jared Martin, known to some as Dusty Farlow on the primetime series Dallas, plays Dr. Harrison Blackwood, the leader of the group. He's an explosive, sexy, dynamic, delightful, intelligent, warm, generous. Uh, he's all of these things. Uh, I like him because he's smart. He's intelligent. He's an astrophysicist. He's a man who works on his brain. We have another wonderful actor, Richard Chavez, who's going to do a lot of the uh, action stuff in this series. I work with, with the, uh, the gray matter up here. Last night, one of my associates intercepted some radio transmissions originating from this location. What kind of transmissions? For the moment, let's just say that they were, uh, they were highly unusual. The second specialist on the team is played by Canadian actress Linda Mason Green. My character's name is Susanna McCullough. She's a PhD in uh, microbiology. She's very excited about this project with Harrison Blackwood. This is the tissue sample you took from the dissolved body? Mm-hmm, but it's not exactly human anymore. Then what is it? Half human, half alien. It's as if the cells from both species have merged to create something new, unique. As a mother and the only woman on the team, Linda's character faces some special challenges. I think that her sense of the future and that this is her home is a major motivator for her. She's taking care of her home. Suzanne? Yeah. Good work. Thanks, Harrison. The toughest member of the team is played by actor Richard Chavez, who recently appeared in the film Predator. As a Vietnam veteran who is part Cherokee Indian, Richard has a lot in common with his War of the Worlds character. I play Lieutenant Colonel Paul Ironhorse, and he's the type of military man who is a graduate of West Point. He can fly anything that can fly, shoot anything that can shoot, drive anything that can drive, and uh, on top of all that, he's a Cherokee Indian and so he has a mysticism about him. Primarily, I guess you'd call me the chaperone, the bodyguard, uh, the man who carries the gun. This is weird stuff we're dealing with here, Blackwood. We all saw some fairly extraordinary phenomenon, Colonel. I don't believe in ghosts, and I sure as hell don't believe in aliens from another planet. Rounding out the team of alien specialists is Norton Drake, a character who created some unusual challenges for actor Phil Aiken. He's a communications and computer expert on the team. Since he's in a wheelchair, 
it forces us to work in a different way. And he's in a remote controlled wheelchair. So it's not just this inanimate object that he happens to push around or wheel around. This uh, wheelchair responds to verbal commands when prefaced by the name Gertrude. So Norton is not just a single character, it's now Norton, Drake, and Gertrude. Gertrude, back three. Oh. <laughs> Left, 45. Forward, 12. The actors aren't the only stars of War of the Worlds. Behind the camera, the special effects artists have a two-fold challenge. We have uh, dissolving bodies and exploding forms and uh, quite a few other graphic things, and Bill is always coming up with new and fresh ideas. First, alien prosthetic supervisor Bill Sturgeon, whose credits include American Werewolf in London and Videodrome, has to create realistic-looking aliens. For most scenes, mechanical parts covered in latex are used, then to make everything really come alive. One final touch is added. What we do is put uh, methyl cellulose over it, and that basically gives it the disgusting, squishy look that uh, we all know and love. The second challenge for the special effects department was to recreate the spaceships from the original film and make them fly. Every attempt was made to duplicate exactly the original look and sound of the ships. In the original movie, War of the Worlds, they used a technique quite different from the techniques that we're now able to use on the series, War of the Worlds. George Powell, to, in order to shoot the various war scenes and scenes with alien spaceships, actually built an entire set, say, of a Los Angeles street, and then shot the models as they went down there with them firing away at the buildings and blowing things up. It all happened at one time, it all happened, the explosions and the models and everything all happened together. Given today's new computer technology, which is what we're now using on the series War of the Worlds, we're able to go in and use an entirely different approach to the problem. Whether it was 90 years ago when H.G. Wells wrote the chilling novel, or 50 years ago when Orson Welles made his shocking radio broadcast, or 35 years ago when George Powell released his Academy Award-winning film, War of the Worlds has had a lasting impact on our lives. Now, this classic story comes to television as a spectacular new series. It's kind of a gateway story, written at the very glimmering beginning of this century of a man looking down the long barrel of time and wondering what it's like out there. It's unusual, it's fantastic, but it's grounded in our world. I do believe that there are other forces, other powers, that are out there. There's no question about it. I think the more we realize the possibilities of getting off the planet and actually traveling into outer space, the more we realize that there is a possibility that something has been here. And how would we react? War of the Worlds. Probably best known for his regular role as Dusty Farlow on the primetime series Dallas, Jared Martin can now be seen in a new and exciting series. He portrays Dr. Harrison Blackwood in the Paramount Television production of War of the Worlds. Harrison Blackwood is a wonderful man. He's an explosive, sexy, dynamic, delightful, intelligent, warm, generous. Uh, he's all of these things. He's like, if you went into a kitchen and there was a lot of food around, and you wanted to make up a dish, and you wanted to put everything in the kitchen into that dish, you would choose, it would be called Harrison Blackwood. Um, fun to play. Hard to get to, but fun to play. Uh, I like him because he's smart, he's intelligent, he's an astrophysicist, he's a man who works from his brain, and I'm trying to make that as sexy and as interesting as possible. He's not a hunk, per se. We have another wonderful actor, Richard Chavez, who's going to do a lot of the uh, action stuff in this series. I work with, with the, uh, the gray matter up here. Um, Harrison, he's got it all. He's got it all. He's a true, leading man. He's got the wit and the humor and the, the sass and the sexiness and the generosity and the intelligence and the, uh, 
the care and, and all that, all that stuff going. So it's a delight to wake up in the morning to him and step into his shoes and not have to, you know, be myself. I look forward to coming to work. I like anything that involves pure invention. And we are in that area where we can invent stories. Um, so it's not so much of a challenge as it is an opportunity for me. It's kind of a gateway story. It's kind of the major story of the 20th century. I mean, after we get our, our problems with nuclear warfare and feeding people and prejudice and hatred out of the way and all those things which are kind of holding us down as a species, we're going to pack our bags and go into space. And this is the story about that, written at the very glimmering beginning of this century of a man looking down the long barrel of time and wondering what it's like out there. And so it's a great story for that reason. It's kind of our story is the 20th century story. Canadian actress Linda Mason Green portrays Dr. Suzanne McCullough, a prominent microbiologist and single mother, in the new Paramount series, War of the Worlds. My character's name is Suzanne McCullough. She's a PhD in uh, microbiology. She's a very strong individual. She's a, a single parent. She has a daughter, 11, Debbie. She's divorced and uh, in her mid-30s and um, She's very, very, there are two things that are very, very important to her. Her work and her child. Not necessarily in that order. I'd say it's actually the other way around. But um, part of the reason she's very excited about this project with Harrison Blackwood is number one, his reputation, which would intrigue her to begin with. But beyond that, when he finally does convince her that the aliens are present and exist, the idea of being able to deal with a completely foreign species, foreign to the planet, of course, foreign to us, uh, when there's so much to learn about uh, us to begin with. And the only reference point, of course, is our own biology and microbiology. So the idea of dealing with a brand new species is absolutely, unequivocally intriguing to her. Basically, as far as I perceive Suzanne, this has become a thing where she understands she's going to save the world because her daughter is going to be living in it. And her, she's part of the continuum. She feels this kind of a responsibility. She wants to deal with this issue because she feels that it is a large part of her responsibility to her daughter and the children and the continuation. It's not just to save her own life. It's not just to save the world as it is because she may or may not have her own opinions about how well we're doing with this whole thing. I think that her sense of the future and that this is her home is a major motivator for her. She's taking care of her home. It's a kind of story that uh, hooks into, it cannot die because it hooks into a very, very basic uh, thing in humans. Uh, it, it becomes a fear of the unknown it deals with the fear of the unknown, fear of evil, fear of darkness, uh, fear of invasion from uh, an unknown. It's a very fundamental thing uh, to lock into a peculiar kind of human fear.
Actor Richard Chavez, who recently starred with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film Predator, portrays Lieutenant Colonel Paul Ironhorse, a West Point graduate and weapons expert in the new Paramount television series, War of the Worlds. I play Lieutenant Colonel Paul Ironhorse, and he's the type of military man who's a graduate of West Point. He can fly anything that can fly, shoot anything that can shoot, drive anything that can drive, and uh, on top of all that, he's a Cherokee Indian, and so he has a mysticism about him. Uh, but in the beginning of the shows, that's going to come out slowly and slowly. The military comes out first because they've, they've got a, the military has a control on him. And then little by little, his Indian and his Cherokee background, they come out and he uses that to help him eventually because it's not just the military logic that's going to help him to defeat the aliens. He's going to have something more than that. He's got to have something more than that. And that's something more... I think will, will, will manifest itself in uh, his spiritualism. Primarily, I guess you'd call me the chaperone, the bodyguard, uh, the man who carries the gun, uh, the man who steps out in front most of the time. And then the other characters are like the intellectuals, the scientists, uh, the computer experts. And uh, so I support them. I do share a heritage with Iron Horse. I'm part Cherokee Indian. I come from a military background. My father was in the military. My father was a Marine. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was in Vietnam in 1971-72. And so I know a lot about this particular man, about his life, about where he came from, how he grew up, uh, what he did. And uh, I played a lot of military roles in my career. And I'm just thankful that this one has something to do with science fiction. Um, I did a play called Tracers uh, about Vietnam that I co-authored with uh, seven other professional actors who were Vietnam veterans. We did it all over the country and in London. That was very dramatic, very serious, very... Um, it had some humor in it, but it was, a, it was like a retracing of my own life. So it was very cathartic to a certain extent. And so, and I've done a lot of pieces like that where I played a military man in a real situation. This, however, is a lot more fun because it's a military man, um, a, a Cherokee, uh, in a fantasy type situation. Hopefully it's fantasy. You never know. It may come true. They may come. A Canadian citizen born in Jamaica, Philip Aiken plays computer expert Norton Drake in the new series, War of the Worlds. Norton Drake, well, he's a communications and computer expert on the team, and uh, as a result gets to be a real technocrat. He spends a lot of time playing with computers and printers and lots of gigas and gadgets that the guys make up for me. He's now I think much more laconic and has a dry wit and not so hugely flamboyant but he he does have a lot of the humor in the show. War of the Worlds has endured I think because it has been the first and in because of it it being a first it has really captured something something special. Um, I don't believe there's been a show that has, has created as much fear and as much interest as the times it's been played. And I think that has a great deal to do with it. It was a novel idea, and it doesn't necessarily mean it was the first time this idea came out, but it was novel in the way it was presented in its reality, that it was, it was grounded in our everyday reality. And I think that's what made it, made it so special. A lot of science fiction, you have to go into the future to get the effects. And if you go into the future, you can distance yourself. Perhaps that's what makes horror so, so fascinating and so strong, because it's everyday things that have a macabre twist on it. And I think, to a certain extent, that's War of the Worlds. Not that it's a macabre twist, but it's a, it's a, 
a scary twist, it's unusual, it's fantastic, but it's grounded in our world. And whether that world was 50 years ago, the people then, it was grounded for them. And I think that's what is, has created its, uh, its fascination for us.